Hello interwebs and welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I wanna talk about a topic that is almost certainly going to get contentious, but I think that it's a topic that needs to be discussed and talked about. And that's this idea of recently Star Trek announced, the franchise announced that there was going to be a spinoff called Star Trek Strange New Worlds, focusing on the character of Captain Pike as he was portrayed by Anson Mount in Star Trek Discovery, along with Ethan Peck's Spock, who appeared in that show, and Rebecca Romaine's number one. Uh, all characters that appeared in Star Trek Discovery and were based on characters that appeared in the first ever pilot for Star Trek that didn't actually air at the time that it was produced, called The Cage, with the original pilot focusing on Captain Pike rather than Captain Kirk. Now, everyone was super excited, myself included, for this announcement because Anson Mount was one of the best parts of Star Trek Discovery. His version of Captain Pike was absolutely amazing. He was inspiring. He was wonderful. I, I did a whole video, I'll link uh, probably up here, I think it's on this side, um, that talked about how much I loved this character and why he felt like such a breath of fresh air for Star Trek, the Star Trek franchise and for just television as a whole as, as a character, why he was just so inspiring to all of us. So don't get me wrong, first things first, I am so, 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 so pumped for this show. I, I am so, so, so excited for it. Like, so, you, I, I can't even tell you how excited I am for this show. But... I think there is a worthwhile conversation to be had around the issue of this show featuring three white leads. Basically, Anson Mount, Ethan Peck, and Rebecca Romaine, three white people, for lack of a better term. Uh, and the reason that this issue in particular is, is kind of an important one to discuss, especially in the context of Star Trek, is the fact that Star Trek has always been a show that has centered diversity. It's just been so didactic about that. Ever since the first season of Star Trek, the first episode of Star Trek, it's always been about like, hey, look, we have a black woman on the bridge, we have an Asian man on the bridge, and every subsequent series of Star Trek has talked about that to some degree or another. Like, look, we have our first black captain in Deep Space Nine. We have, you know, our first female captain in Star Trek Voyager, things like that. We have our first Scott Bakula captain in Star Trek Enterprise. Uh, we have our first uh, gay characters in Star Trek Discovery as main characters, for example. Like, diversity has always been a front end and center issue for Star Trek. And, you know, regardless of how you feel about how the story of Star Trek Picard and Star Trek Discovery has gone, one of the things that I personally have really loved about this era of Star Trek is it has taken um, these minority groups and really put them front and center and, and really allowed for a real true diversity of cast and crew and characters on screen. We have on Discovery, there's Michael Burnham as a, a as a woman of color, as the lead of the show. We have a gay man. We have an interracial gay couple on the show. We have, um, we, the first episode featured an Asian captain on the show with George O, and that character has come back as the Emperor. Um, and, and there's just a, such a diversity of cast. Same thing in Picard. While that is led by, you know, Captain Picard, a white, white man, white cisgender man, we also have Raffi, uh, we have, uh, uh, why am I blanking on his name? The captain of La Serena. I'm, I'm blanking on the character's name off the top of my head for some reason. Soji as well. Uh, I believe the actress is of Asian descent. So uh, there's just been a really wonderful uh, explosion of diversity uh, on Star Trek right now in the modern era that, like I said, while I think the previous eras of Star Trek have definitely had that diversity as well and have been very clear about wanting to show diversity, uh, one of the problems with it is if you look going back to like especially Star Trek and Star Trek The Next Generation, a little less so in Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise kind of went back into it a little bit in a regressive way as well. Um, but those shows were mainly led by white men, white characters, kind of coming in and being like, well, I'm going to learn a lesson about diversity now, and maybe other people will will be able to take part of it. I mean, clearly in Next Generation we had Geordi as well, um, and many other diverse uh, members of that cast too. Guinan, for example. So, in many ways, going back to a straight white guy-led show uh, with Captain Pike feels a bit regressive. Now, I want to be very clear here because I know, I already know, there's going to be people who have jumped in the comments of going, you SJWs are always forcing diversity and you can't like anything and, you know, you always hate the straight white men. Well, straight white men can't, you know, you just hate anything that has a straight white man in it. That is not what I'm saying. As I made very, very clear before, 
I am very excited for this show. I love Anson Mount's Pike. I, I have no problem with his character. I really like him. And, the, you know, the fact that he's a straight white man isn't a problem for me. Uh, and, and so I kind of want to be clear, because this is a difficult subject to tackle, is like, I don't have a specific answer on this. I'm not going to sit here and rail at this camera and rail at you at the audience and say, how dare they focus on a show on a straight white character? It's, it's awful. It's a terrible thing. I don't think that at all. So I just want to be very clear about that. And the same extends to Spock and Rebecca Romaine. I think both of those characters have, and those actors have done brilliant jobs. I mean, clearly I love Spock and I've absolutely adored Ethan Peck's portrayal. And I really love Rebecca Romaine, what little we've kind of seen of her so far. But I really like the idiosyncrasy she's brought to the character, like she did in the short Trek Q&A with the sort of like singing that she brought to it. Or like the fact that in Discovery saw her eating hamburgers, which is such a great uh, sort of thing for her characters to be given. And it should be said, the character of number one at the time of Star when Star Trek first came out, the character of number one was a fantastically progressive character. A woman as second in command on a ship, commanding and commanding and had this great presence portrayed by Major Barrett. And so much so that it was, she was one of the things that the executive says, she has to go. We can't have a woman first officer on the ship. You know, it was too progressive for the time. And even today, seeing a woman character in a leadership role and have that type of personality uh, is still somewhat progressive in many ways. So I don't want to just say like three white people, yeah, there's nothing, there's no good representation there or anything like that. So like I said, I, I'm not here to be like, how dare they? And how dare a straight white men ever have any leads in a show? But I think it's still, it's, it's a worthwhile topic to at least have a discussion on. And I also have no doubt that the Pike show will have plenty of diversity within it. We already kind of seen, there was the episode of Short Treks called Ask Not, where there was, I forget her name, but there was the um, woman of Indian descent who seems to have been transferred to the Enterprise, and I would be surprised if we didn't see that character show up on the show at some point. So there clearly will be diversity, and I would be surprised if, you know, the rest of the cast that we hear announced for the Captain Pike show isn't a diverse cast as well in, in the vein of Star Trek. On the other side of this, there is an element of this that feels a little bit frustrating to a lot of people because as I said this era of Star Trek has felt very progressive has felt very diverse in allowing multiple voices and multiple characters to come to the fore and so this excitement around a show this return to classic Trek as they said feels a bit regressive and feels like to many people and I, I feel a little of this too though probably not to the degree that some other people that that there's been a loss to certain segments of the Star Trek fan base who as I said before, rant about SJW culture, rant about woke culture, rant about like, you're putting forced diversity in my show, quote unquote, forced diversity, which I, that's a whole other topic to, to break down. But um, so it feels like going to a show led by a straight white man that's a return to classic Trek feels, feels regressive and feels like those voices who are intensely problematic and intensely harmful to certain communities, myself as a trans person being one of them, uh, feels like it's letting them win. I'm not saying that that's a correct thing or a correct feeling, but I also understand where that sense of disappointment or worry or fear um, comes from. And it will give those types of groups a talking point. Later on, like if the Pike show happens to be the best Star Trek show in forever, I can totally see, totally see uh, a group of like certain segments here on YouTube who start ranting about like, well, this is what happens when you get classic Trek and you have, you know, you have your strong man, strong male character leading the day. I mean, if, if it weren't for the shows like Discovery, which was like made these stupid cuck male characters and weaken them and all that stuff. And so it's clear this is the reason that the Pike show works. So I can clearly see that being a talking point and I can clearly, I already know that that's going to be something that's going to be said. Um, and so that, that already is preemptively frustrating for a lot of us, myself included. But again, I still think, you know, in a very real sense that the Captain Pike character was a brilliant and beautiful and fantastic character that I loved, and I loved Anson Mount's portrayal. And so, it's a hard question to answer. 
Because I'm not, I don't want to sit here and be like, I never want straight white men to lead things or to be the main characters in things. The problem generally becomes is that straight white men tend to be the only characters that lead things in so many things. So, like, I mean, just look at the Marvel movies. You have, like, how many of those Marvel movies and all but, what, two or three of them are led by straight white men? So when we get something like Captain Marvel or Black Panther, we celebrate it because it's so unique. And that's why I celebrate Discovery and Picard for those reasons, because they are kind of unique in, in their diversity. So again, coming back to this, it's, it's kind of a circle of logic of like, I keep making it okay in my head and I keep having problems with it. And that's why I stand here and say, I have no answers to this question. All I know is I like the ca character of Captain Pike. I like the character of Spock. I like the character of number one. And I also trust in this current leadership of Star Trek behind the camera, Alex Kurtzman and, um, um, I'm a blank on his production company, Hidden, Hidden Fortress, Locked Door. I, I, it's something, something like that. I'm Secret Hideout. That's, that's the name of the uh, production company. I trust them in their commitment to diversity and their commitment to showing multiple perspectives and multiple points of views and remaining to that, true to that core element of Star Trek. So I do trust them, and I do like the character Pike, so I am excited for this. But I think, again, as I've said before, this is a worthwhile conversation to have a discussion on all the nuances of this, and, and what does it mean to try to be diverse, to try to represent multiple points of view? Because clearly, straight white men should be part of that. We shouldn't be saying straight white men shouldn't be part of the diversity of humanity. They are part of the diversity of humanity. They just shouldn't be the only one. Um, and, and I think that's the problem that most people tend to have. But then it also, all of this gets wrapped up in politics. So clearly, I, I, I should, I, you know, just on its face, I shouldn't have a problem with Captain Pike being a straight white man as a captain. But there's also so many other annoying politics that get wrapped up in it. So diversity should not be this checklist that we cross off. It's like, all right, we got our we got our queer character, we got our black character, we got our straight character, we got our white character, we got our woman character. It shouldn't be like that. But there's an element where we sometimes have to think that way because of the political element of the world right now. And so it's this frustrating place to be in of like, it shouldn't be an issue, but it is. And because it is an issue and it's an imperfect issue, we have to talk about it imperfectly. And, and that's where I kind of get frustrated. All right, I, I've kind of talked myself in circles a few times here, so I'm gonna end the video here, but I'd really love to hear all of your thoughts out in the comments. Do you think that this is a major issue for the Pike Show? Is it something that's turning you off from it? Is it something that has you excited? Or do you not think it's an issue at all? Do you think it's less of an issue that I made out to be? Have I not made it a big of an issue enough? Please let me know in the comments. I, I honestly am very, very curious to see what the community has to say on this topic. I, I generally read all the comments as much as I can on all my videos, but for this one in particular, I'm, I'm actually very, very intrigued to hear what all of you have to say. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more discussions on Star Trek and things like that. Also, if you want to help me out, um, especially right now that I don't have a full-time job and help make these videos better and things like that, I do have a Patreon page, and every little bit helps me over there in big and small ways. So if you can consider giving a few bucks on Patreon, that means a lot as well. But regardless, if you subscribe, comment, or pay give to my Patreon, I'm just glad that you stopped by, joined in this discussion, and talked in good faith in this discussion. Uh, I should make that clear distinction. Um, I just want to say to you, live long and prosper. Thank you all of you for watching and a special thank you to my patrons, including my amazing commander level and above patrons, Miranda Janelle, Ashley Allen, Eli Berg-Moss, Sela Roman, Christina Dalliance, Greg Gillum, Stefan Schuhart, Boyd and Mary Beth Earl, Ish the Mad, Randy Thompson, Mouse Pounder, Wellington Marcus, Lorena Mesa, Alexander Miller, Mari Neckar, Gavin Robinson, Michael Beam, Aaron Brown, Munir Amlani, Maggie Evans, Maeve, Wen Dizzle Bizzle, Dante St. James, Wayne Twitchell, Patrick Shannon, Din Hagney, Mystic the Monakeet, Bree Beecher, and Polly Mina. All of your support means so much to me right now, so thank you to all of you. Live long and prosper.